All right, so this is the little mini project that I've been working on for the past day or so. And this consists of an Arduino Uno chip, which you see here, and then two breadboards, which are these white things, for those of you who don't know what that is. Um, basically, this is a programmable computer chip. You can write a code on your computer and then load it onto this chip. And then these are just basically your circuit boards um, that carry the circuit tree and whatnot. So what this does is you see there are three main parts you have to know about. This is a motor, this is a potentiometer, this is basically a knob, and you have eight LED lights, and all this is hooked up to, again, the Arduino chip. So what I wanted to do with this build was to have the motor here and have that pretty much run at any speed that I wanted to given by the potentiometer. So basically the farther I would turn this knob, the faster it would spin. And you know, the farther left, the further left that I would turn this knob, uh, the slower it would be. And I, that wasn't really enough because that was kind of too simple for me. So I, had, I decided to add a little bit more, which wasn't really much, it was just tedious work. But I'm um, hooking up these eight LED lights and each of these lights corresponds to the power level or the signal being read from this sensor. And it, well, pretty much indirectly um, is measuring the speed of the motor. So what I had to do was I had to read the sensor value from the potentiometer and then map that to an analog output that is used for the motor. And I also had these LED lights programmed. Each of these is programmed for um, whatever 1,000 divided by 8 is. So I think it's like 125-ish. Um, so every 125 in terms of value for the potentiometer, every time it would increase by 125, whatever value that is, um, one of these would light up. So eventually by the time it's at 100%, this light should be on and the rest of them are on as well. So let's see exactly how this works. So. To get the motor starting, unfortunately, you need a bit of a, a good bit of power. So you can see that there's one LED light on and one that's flickering. That means it's just on the verge of, I think, 250. Um, so we slowly turn, it takes about up to four LEDs until it actually starts running. And you can probably hear the motor running in the background, but watch as I turn the potentiometer and listen to the speed of the motor speeding up. All right, now this is at full speed. Now, I don't really want to run this at full speed for too long, but you can hear that running. You can see it works. All eight LEDs are lit up, indicating that it's at 100% power. Now I'm going to slowly decrease um, the amount of power going to the potentiometer, and then you'll see that the LED lights dim down, and you can also hear it slowing down as well. What's interesting here is that you notice that when I turned it on, it needed at least four LEDs for the motor to start going. But once it gets going, it can in fact go at a speed that's you know pretty low, and it can go really pretty slowly. Um, let's take it down to one LED. So this is about one eighth of the total speed that can go at. You can see visually that the motor is slowing down a lot, but it can still spin at this slow of a rate. But for some reason, when you start it up, it just doesn't have, I guess, enough momentum or enough power to keep spinning. So it kind of struggles when you um, start it from zero speed. So this is even slower now. Even slower. Very slow. Okay, and now it basically has turned off. So again, this is the product that, product that I've been working on. Just a motor that's controlled by potentiometer with LED indicator lights telling me exactly what the speed is. So in case I want to get um, a more consistent you know, output for this, I at least know there are hey, eight LEDs. Or if I want an even more accurate uh, reading, I can just go to the serial monitor because I have this printing out on a serial monitor right now. Um, so I can see the actual values and get more, I guess, more precise things if I wanted to. Um, of course, this was just a small build. I do intend to try to implement this into something, but this seems like really big for what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to try to see if I can't find a way to cut it down. And I also need this motor to be standing upright like this. 
which I'm going to need to try to find a way to mount it like this because it obviously just doesn't stand up on its own like that. And that's why I'm resting it on my guitar capo here. And that's pretty much all I've been working on for the past day or so. I'm quite pleased I was able to get this done and get it working uh, just to prove that I can you know, manipulate some code that I found. <laughs> uh, not real much of a skill, but hey, it worked and I'm pretty happy. All right, so thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you later.